In general, the temples of the Legend of Zelda series have unique and original designs. Nintendo never fails to come up with ideas that haven't been done in that way before, which makes those dungeons even more amazing. And then there's the Woodfall Temple. Now, here we encounter a problem, because Thief Bug apparently doesn't like it that much, while the Woodfall Temple for me is one of my favorites. So, hmm, you know what? We'll let you decide in the comments. Just tell us what you think about Woodfall Temple. So instead of that, we're going to have a look at something more original according to Thief Bug, the Snowhead Temple. We start off with a cold welcome of the White Boost, just waiting to give us plenty of hugs in the first room of the dungeon. After equipping the Goron Mask and pushing the block, we head through the right door, as the other two doors in this room cannot be accessed yet. Here we use the Goron Mask to get over the bridge and go to the left, where we will now be introduced to the vast size of the dungeon. We use the door on the other side of the room and pull the block away to grab the key then push the block to the other side of the area, which will spawn a chest on a platform we can't reach yet. Back to the main room. Here we now use the bow to melt the ice, which leads us back into the first one, where we will now use the small key we just obtained. We blow up the wall, go upstairs and use the bow again to drop the icicles and free the other platforms. We grab another small key in the chest and enter the door on the bottom, solve the little puzzle and go to the next room which turns out to be the main area again. We use the snow slope to get on the other side of the bridge, then jump across using the Goron Mask and enter the room where Wizrobe is waiting for us. After gently slashing him a bit, he kindly gave us some fire arrows. What a good guy. And that's also an essential part of this dungeon. Before we begin, we want you to know that there are two different main speedruns of this game, which have a different set of items at this point. One is on the Japanese version of the game, which will have the hookshot at this point. The other one is on the English version, which does not have the hookshot. They have one thing in common though, neither of those runs ever obtained the Goron Mask. So how will we deal with these differences? Easy, we'll just show both ways. We start with the English run, which can only get past the first room by using the icicle to clip into the block as it doesn't have the Goron Mask to get rid of it. We enter the room on the right and jump to the platform on the left where we kill a freezer and then head upstairs to the map room. Here we get the infinite sword glitch which makes our sword hit every frame and prevents us from falling off ledges and then use bombs to shield their explosions in order to reach the higher up platform. This puts us on the opposite side of the Wizrobe room already where we will now use bombs in order to perform a trick called damage boosting. When a bomb hits Link he will get pushed forward within a very short amount of time. The first frame of said push is so fast that we make it push us off the latch of the ramps. This is fast enough to just jump to the other ramps. We do this again and are at whiz rope already. Here we use a decu stick and jump slash the door behind us, breaking the decu stick in a way that Link still keeps the stump of the stick without putting it away. However, this little stump doesn't break while still dealing the same amount of damage as the normal decu stick does and this is twice as strong as the Kokiri Sword. If we now use Jump Slashes, it only takes two attacks for a Wizrobe to get into his second phase, which we will interrupt by using more Jump Slashes right before his form introduction starts. This will damage him, make him disappear and making attempt to start his form again. Another Jump Slash and he is defeated without ever getting into his second phase. The Japanese run, which has the hookshot, starts off by equipping said item and a decu stick, then hopping into the tattle tax box with a hookshot in his hands. During the side top, he draws the hookshot again and then switches to the decu stick right as the text is triggered. This will make the game register the decu stick, but does not give it the time to put it in Link's hands, so he is technically holding both of them at the same time. We now clip into the block, equip the decu stick and hit the C button with a stick on it again. Due to the hookshot properties, Link will now attempt to shoot with a decu stick, which even works. The result of this is a lit arrow, as if we just shot an arrow through a torch. And this will allow us to melt the ice at the beginning of the dungeon right away. Also, we should probably add that the Zora Mask is capable to push the block on the Japanese version, 
While it isn't on the English one, as the Zora form has the same strength as the Gorin on the Japanese version. We enter the door and position ourselves on a certain spot, which allows us to hit the torch at the top of this platform. It's a really precise trick though, as we only have one pixel for this to work. Fun fact, we can also teach a song to the scarecrow and play the song here. It will spawn and we can hookshot it to get up and then hit the torch to get onto the next floor. From here we use bombs next to the edges of the platforms, which will push us forward when dealing damage. You know the drill. Once at Wizrobe, we use our Deku Stick again, Jump Slash to store its damage in a crouch step, which we will then use to get the infinite sword glitch. This time, we only need to touch Wizrobe for him to take the same amount of damage as a Jump Slash with a Deku Stick would deal, making the fight a lot easier. We once again force him into his second form and just stand in the spot where he's meant to spawn when he wants to introduce his illusions. Our infinite sword glitch will handle this however, defeating him before he's able to start his phase. We exit the room and jump down onto the middle platform where we now unfreeze and enter the green door. In here we light up all the torches which unlocks the door in the middle of the room where we then use the Goron Mask to raise the middle platform. We now go back into the second room with the freeze arts, unfreeze the chest and grab the key inside. We now head one floor up again and unfreeze the block path with our fire arrows, which will get us another level higher. We once again use the Goron Mask to go to the right side and unlock the door, then head to the right and go up even further where there are two Denolfos waiting for us. We are now on top of the pillar we just raised. We head on to the other side of the room where Wizrobe is waiting for us once again. This time he will reward us with the boss key though. We jump down onto the ramps again and get rid of two of the blue blocks that kept the pillar in the middle of the room up. This lowers the platform a little and we can now head up and remove two more blocks, which now makes it possible for us to get rid of the snowballs. And behind it, the last staircase is hidden. We equip the Goral Mask, roll over the ice ramp and make our way to the boss. Now, this fight is fairly straightforward. We use the Goron Mask to roll after him and hit him with our spikes. That's really the only thing we have to do, except for dodging rocks, bombs and lightning. After barrel rolling our way to victory for what feels like three years straight, we finally got our well-deserved heart container and goat remains. And the Gorons are finally freed of their never-ending winter. After obtaining our precious fire arrows, the Japanese version uses the hookshot to get to the next floor. From here, we use a bomb to obtain the infinite sword glitch once more and hover up to the snowballs which we will then destroy with a bomb chew. Once upstairs, we get the infinite sword glitch once more and just hover over the gap we were meant to use the Goron mask for. But wait, we never collected the boss key. Well, obviously there is a solution for that. We use another bomb and perform a recoil flip by just shielding the bomb damage while backflipping. This will push us backwards into the corner if done right, which will now clip us slightly into the wall, and from here we can simply jump behind the boss door which was blocking the way. If we're on the English version of the game, we have to go a different path due to the missing hookshot. So we once again use a long jump to get ourselves onto the other ramp, then hold our shield up and backflip into the ice. As the game handles ice as a regular damage source while Link is in the air, it will push him backwards, ultimately pushing him into the loading zone, which will take us upstairs. Here we now perform a trick called Mega Flip, which uses invincibility frames of the roll and turns the gate momentum into a backflip, which we can use to get to the snowballs blocking the path. Here we then use a trick called Super Slide, which will give us a lot of backward speed if we roll into a bomb at the right time, try to pick it up and hold up our shield at the same time. If this is done with a slightly tilted angle, the collision of the snowball will just push us through them instead of back out as we are a little too fast. From here we once again hover over the ramp and use a Rico flip to get ourselves past the boss door. And from here the process is almost the same. We unfreeze Goat with a fire arrow and then equip arrows as we do not have a Goron mask. Fun fact here, while in the Japanese version Link just dodges Goat, he gets hit in the American version. We're not sure why this is the case and it wouldn't make a lot of sense to patch something like that in, but it is interesting to see at least. We run up to a certain spot and start aiming with our bow. As Goat is meant to wait for the player if he's lacking behind, he will just stand still and start shooting lightning bolts at us. We use this to shoot him and dodge his lightning with two timed side hops. 
After some time, he's meant to change direction as we're not following, so we will time our Cytops in a way that he starts charging back at us as soon as we release the 15th arrow, because this is all it takes to take him down. From here we collect our heart container and the remains, and continue without ever obtaining the Goron Mask. Poor Dermani. Thank you for watching this week's video on Casual vs Speedrun. You might want to check out our channel if you want to see more of this, or challenges, or beta content, or glitches, or corruption.